Welcome to Flippin' Trinkets and Treasures. We are two Southern ladies on a journey to find new treasures. Every day is a new adventure and a chance to step into the past and learn about where we come from. To add to our growing collection of pretty things and make a few bucks along the way. This is our passion. It's how we make our living and more important than anything, it's fun. So come along for the ride and we can travel our next adventure together. See you there. Hi everybody. We're still in Clarksville, Tennessee today. Originally we'd planned on going to the two Goodwills and then heading home, but I forgot that there was this place that we go to sometimes called Lucille's. Oh, it's Miss Lucille's, sorry. It's, it's kind of a flea market marketplace type place. And there's a mixture of antiques, vintage items, new. Um, there's like healthcare. There's pretty much anything you can possibly imagine. There's a little bit of everything in this store. Um, it can sometimes be on the pricey side, but um, sometimes you can find some really neat things. Um, do you think of anything else? It's huge. Yeah, it's huge. I already told Mom that we're gonna, when we go in here, we're going to have to be kind of uh, choosy about which booths we go into because otherwise it would take us the rest of the afternoon and we don't have that kind of time. I mean, we do, but I'm already tired. <laughs> Worn out. And like, I just need, I need a good place to go that's comfortable. Mm -hmm. But uh, hopefully we can find a few things. We also need to really up our inventory right now. So uh, wish us luck. Hopefully we well, can find some stuff. And save on some time and mileage too. I mean, right. we're here already. Mm-hmm. And I'd rather do it all in one day as to take one day at a time to do this. So. Right. So we're going to get in there and hopefully they let us film. <laughs> we'll see you in there. Bye. All right. So obviously, um, as you can tell, I'm having to do a voiceover throughout this video because uh, when we went in there, um, they had the radio like blaring and it's a big like, like copyright no-no for YouTube, so um, I'm gonna do a voiceover, and hopefully it won't be too bad. Um, we found this aisle or this booth was the first one we went into, and they had some of the most beautiful things, and that whole selection of this art glass stuff, and they're so pretty, like the colors are amazing. And let's see, um, I was looking at the prices. Um, this one's the one that Mom liked. It was a, kind of a green and white. Of course, they're all out of our price range, but at this point, we didn't even care because we're seeing things that are just absolutely gorgeous. Um, and then, Mom's actually about to show me something. Yeah, there we go. Uh, it's so pretty. It's Italian glass. It's not Murano. I would think it's it's like white crystal something or another, but it's made in Italy. And it was like $45, but it was absolutely gorgeous. Um, and then, Mom gets distracted and she's like, oh, look at this. <laughs> There's a, uh, was it 45? I think it was $45, yep. I don't know if you can, you can tell or not, but, um, uh, go on down. Okay, take your time. Sorry, I'm talking to myself, but I can't do anything about it. Oh, this right here is actually a authentic Cabot de Monte, um, flower arrangement. Like, that's, that's, like, like, made petals, uh, and that's, that's the actual mark for it. Um, it's, it's amazing. I'd never actually seen the actual authentic mark for Cabot de Monte. I mean, we've seen like the petals and stuff, but those were actually kind of like uh, reproductions. They weren't exactly, exactly Cabot de Monte, like that one. And that was made in Italy also. And we all know how much Jennifer loves Italy. Um, let's see. Moving on. I just wanted to point out that Miss, Miss, Miss Lucille's, like their selections are amazing. Like these are all wooden things that people make and bring and sell at the store. And uh, we're just giving you an idea of how big this place is. It's absolutely massive. I mean, it goes all the way down. There's like a room in the back that has items. And then it goes like two aisles over. Um, just as long and just as many like vendors and booths. And uh, uh, I'm trying to think. These voiceovers are not easy. <laughs> it looks easy, but it's not. Um. We're just giving things a look. This uh, this vendor here has um, some items that are a little bit older. Um, they're more. Uh, I don't know. My my brain is not working at the moment. But <laughs> 
let's see um got purses got some artwork on the wall and look at these these plates are actually more antique than they are vintage hello there and then as we're leaving mom sees this piece that's really neat um and i think she had originally thought that it was something that someone had actually handmade but uh it's actually i think it's it's got some kind of a marking there but i didn't get a close enough view of it um but it was really neat shapes and the colors and that's all i've always drawn to things like that that are different and um yeah like i said we're being really picky and choosy about which vendors we go to um Ooh. Oh, this is the Royal Hager. Yes. This actually was here the last time we'd gone to Miss Lucille's and I passed it up. And I passed it up again today like an idiot. But I love Royal Hager. Um, the colors of it, like that blue. Oh, blue and green. Mm -hmm. That is my jam right there. And actually, it's, it's, it's a good thing that I'm doing a voiceover here because there's this guy that was moving the speaker shoving in it. It was scraping across the floor. Uh, oh, and this, I was pretty sure, was Empoli. It's that um, optics in the glass. It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, they're, that it is Empoli, but it's a good indication. It looks like there was a sticker down there in the bottom there. And there's a pontal mark, so it was definitely hand-blown. Um, and Empoli is another um, glassmaker in the same vein as, as um, Murano. It's just a different area of Italy. Because, like, Murano is not one single maker. It's a bunch of different people, but they create the glass in the city of Murano. Um, oh, and I saw this piece, and I loved it. It's purple. And it's got the controlled bubbles. Oh, it's so pretty. But I had to pass on it because it was a little out of my price range, but it's so pretty. I, I would have, yeah, I would have loved to have had that and kept it. <clears throat> and there's a, a glass purse. It's Murano. And as we were leaving, I caught sight of these, uh, those figures down there in the bottom there. And I just had a feeling that they were probably another Royal Hager, but I think they, I think they are. If I would get the hang of actually filming what I'm looking at, that would be great. But yes, those were Royal Hager. And moving along, um, mom was kind of going on without me. Oh, she found a just a regular Hag Hager piece. It's got some little um, some little marks on the corners, um, like on the bottom there in the corner sections, like where the paint has been like chipped off a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me, but they were only seven. It was only seven dollars. So. Uh, and Mom and I were having this conversation on the way as we we're walking through about how that uh, we love Hager and we actually prefer Hager to like McCoy or any of the others I mean there's fine there's there's a huge following for McCoy but as it comes to the making of things uh, and the um, colors that, that are used the glazes Hager is just I think I mean just in my opinion is a, a superior um, maker I absolutely love them and of course I'm showing there's a whole candle section where people make the candles homemade candles and sell them um <laughs> we're about to have to take a little break because we've been so hot all day and mom found the she found the air conditioner vent <laughs> she was so excited about that i was too to be to be like honest it was so hot and it felt good to just stand in that cold air i'm just basically saying i want to stay here can i stay here all day okay and now, right now where we are is we're actually in the back room um, at the end of that big, huge, long walkway that we I showed you earlier. Uh, I picked this dog up because I thought it was ceramic or uh, pottery and it ended up being plastic and it was missing its brain. <laughs> I was like, oh, you poor thing. There's just, I mean, you, there's no telling how many things that we miss going over because we were really trying to do like a, just like a quick work through because by this point we'd already shopped, you know, two places and we were tired. Um, I saw this head bust here and I thought it was interesting. Um, and was that a duck in a nest? That's pretty cute. 
there's just a lot of things and you never know what you're going to find in places like but like like uh, miss lucille's there's just a, a selection a very broad variety of things i saw this elephant and i liked it but it was just a little pricey and i was like eh, you know i like it but i'm just gonna, i think i'm gonna gonna leave it this time i thought about it though i really did Oh, it's so difficult. I'm watching, of course, as I'm talking, and I, I just keep watching, and I forget I'm supposed to talk. That was Winnie the Pooh. Got a nice little plate collection. Okay, dear, move along. Here we go. Let's see. We're about halfway through by this point. Uh, now, this vendor is a really neat one, and they've actually cleaned up quite a bit, and... Uh, organized uh but i found a oh oh first off this is amazing this is fitz and floyd i absolutely love this picture and i was so excited to see it and i really thought about getting it but i um actually looked it up on ebay and i noticed of course they have it priced for 25 dollars, and that's about the same amount that ebay was offering so i left it behind which makes me sad i did end up picking up this picture here i like the shape of it um I just like the way that the top is made and even the, just the simplicity of the designs and the painting on it and it's, it's handmade um so i did actually pick this up and put it in the cart it's one of our i guess it probably is the first one we picked up um we i'm gonna warn you ahead of time we really didn't get a whole lot from here but we just enjoyed the experience of visiting and seeing everything that they had to offer oh but that previous vendor while i was thinking about it um i had found a Murano bowl in there for seven dollars and yeah it was amazing. Um, now I see this little dog down here and it caught my eye. It's so cute and realistic looking. And it's made of some kind of a felt on the outside. Like it actually felt like fur. Um, I really should have picked this up and I don't know why I didn't because the price was fine. And I mean, it was $5. I should have grabbed that, but I didn't. We put it, we left it behind. Poor doggy. So look at his face. So cute. Oh, Lord, if I could go back in time. Okay, we're moving on. Um, this is where I found several pieces of Fenton that I was really interested in. It has the silver crest ruffle edge. It's that clear at the very top, that clear ruffle above the white. It's called, uh, what's a crest? It has different colors. Uh, there's a top hat crest. And there's a, oh, yeah. That's lovely. But again, it's, it's really difficult to find Fenton that's a... That's worth our while to buy because of the, the prices are so I mean, on point in most of these places. And we have to ha have it at a certain price for us to be able to make a profit on it. I, I really, uh, I thought that was an interesting picture. And I forget who makes it. Brain freeze. Let's see. And I'm pretty sure this is Andrea Bysadek. Um We've actually sold several pieces of hers. Um, but a lot of people kind of turn their heads away from it because it's... It's hit or miss. Sometimes they're they're worth the, the paying for, and sometimes they're not. Um, that's twenty percent off in this booth. I think this, is, and we actually filmed this a little a little wise while ago. So I'm trying to keep I'm trying to remind remind myself of what we're what we're doing when we're walking through, and I can't hear what we're saying. So, <laughs> oh Lord. I do know that uh, I think we have another section, but we're, we're skipping and, you know, moving through pretty quickly. Um, oh, here. Um, on the bottom there, that light blue, um, there's like a bowl with some, like, trumpet-looking pieces. Um, this is an, is it Epern? Yeah, those little center pieces, they actually come out, and they fit back in, and they're kind of how they use, like, uh, to separate, like, bouquets of flowers in in the combo uh, bowl and then of course there's this whole selection of paperweights i always got to give my props to my paperweights i think they're gorgeous and the details of the people inside that like the the figurines it's amazing and the colors oh yeah yep well that's a crab there on the, the right there but let's see Got some roosters up here, and I'm—I'm—I don't know. 
for some reason, roosters catch my attention all the time. Chickens. And then over here, right in the corner, it's another one of those, what I think is probably an Empoli glass uh, brandy snifter. I didn't tell you that before. It's a brandy snifter. It's not meant to actually use. It's, it's for decoration purposes. But uh, let's see what else we got. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, this huge thing right down here. I was, I was, I was amazed that someone could make some pottery that's that big. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Oh, I thought that was amazing. And there goes mom's in her own little world over there. <laughs> and this is what I'm saying. They have a selection of things. I mean, that was like a whole selection of like baby clothes and kids' clothes. And that this ma this caught my attention really quickly. It was a, a mouse, a mouse, a moose planter, and there was three of them. And of course, they were out of my price range, but I thought they were really neat. And all the stuff in here is so much older than the rest of the things we've actually looked at so far. Um, there's just so much to look at, and so much. Okay, this is something. I think what was it? Uh, Roseville. Okay, it was Roseville, USA, and that's another. They're in the same vein as like Hager and McCoy and Hull. Um, but I'd never actually seen one of these out in the wild before. Um, of course, it was priced, you know, a little high, so I left it. But of course, Mom and I had to have to take a look at these figurines. Those cats are so cute. I love them. They're like, I guess they're like Siamese cats, maybe. And we keep on moving. This plate caught my eye. I thought it was so pretty. Um, and I can't remember what it was made for. I mean, who made it? But it was just the details of it. And of course this is Wedgwood. But I love that plate. Look at, and these two potteries here, um, one on each side, they're actually hull pottery. Um, and they had some interesting detailing. And um, they actually weren't that awful, of a, that awful, that bad of a price. But I was being picky, I guess, and I left them behind. Now this vendor is one that I'd love to go into, and it's one that Mom and I we, we know we can probably almost never get anything in there because they're so they're they're priced where well, they're supposed to be up at retail value, but they have some of the most historically like beautiful pieces. Oh, I love that. Oh, what did I, I don't mm, I don't know who made that, but it was pretty. And there's this collection of Jim Beam bottles back here in the back. And th those are, you know, of course, uh, there's a certain collector's market for that as well. Um, and they weren't that expensive. Again, I, there's some of these things, I'm wondering why I didn't get them. I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe I was just thinking I was just browsing and not in it to, sh you know, get inventory. Um, but I thought they were pretty in the colors. I, I am always drawn to, okay, mom says I, I always have a habit of saying this is my favorite color. And I'll be like, burgundy, that's my favorite color. And it's purple, that's my favorite color. But I really am drawn to like the brighter, like the blues and the purples, um, and some of the like the wine colors. Yeah, I like vivid colors. Oh, I thought that was a really pretty vase. It looks kind of like it's Bristol. Then uh, let's see. Um, I think Mama went over to the next the next booth over. I saw all the colors, and I was like, "Yep, that's me." And I think that's a uh, the orange color is persimmon. Uh, but there's a whole lot of uh, this glassware. And we're about to hit to... What was I looking at? I don't know what I'm looking at. Oh, it's just the vase. Okay. Bristol. Oh, no, that is Bristol. Okay, that's a Bristol vase. Nice. You can see the age on that. That's amazing. That is, like, absolutely amazing. And, of course, we've got the, the Fenton vases. I was showing mom what, what a Bristol vase looked like because like I was, so we, haven't, we haven't really done a whole lot with Bristol but they are lovely um, if we've got some carnival glass up there that's the color I like right there too um, and I like this uh, compote bowl or uh, com I forget the word oh my goodness uh, contour no I forget I'll think about it I'll probably put it in the bottom here if I remember it now this is like a viking glass like bowl and it's, I think they call it stretch glass. Um, but I love the color. Blue. Along with my carnival glasses. Love the blue. 
Oh, there's a whole section of amber coming up. Let's see. And uh, I really found these these vases interesting. They're, they're kind of like mugs. Um, I can't, what is it? Oh, they're made in Germany, West Germany. And I don't know if a lot of people don't know or not, but like West Germany doesn't exist anymore. Like it is plain Germany now. So when you find something that says West Germany, it's pretty old. Um, and I always, you know, grab stuff like that when I see it. If, if it's with a, a good price. Granted, I didn't grab those. But, and I think we're actually heading down the last section here. Um, I think the last section has a little bit more of a modern take. Like, well, except for this. We've got a whole, there's a whole booth there full of vinyl records. But that has gained a whole new audience, you know, as time's gone by too. So, <laughs> we'll move past that. I'm like, Mom, what are you looking at? She's like, uh tube tops <laughs> that's not gonna help our inventory and uh, i guess right here i'm saying as you can see i think we're pretty much finished for the day so we'll see you out in the car all right that was awesome that place is amazing I like, it. Oh, like i said you can find everything a little bit of everything in that store mm. um they even have a little like cafe where you can have lunch and then there's like, a little coffee section i don't drink coffee but a lot of people do, so that's that's a popular thing here. Um, we got a few things, not not a whole lot, mm -hmm. just like, what, like four or five maybe? Four or five pieces. Um, and they were nothing major, just kind of like bread and butter pieces. But um, they have such amazing things that you don't see anywhere else. Um, but they're all collector piece, I mean, yeah. prices. And they're, not priced, they're priced retail prices. accurate, mm -hmm. but there's not a lot we can do with it, that price range wise. Like, oh, I love that Fitz and Floyd, Floyd piece. Oh so cute and pretty and that royal hager it, i can't believe it was still here i really oh i love that piece but anyway um we're, we're done <laughs> first to get something to drink yes we're sweating to death and thirsty so we're gonna go get something to drink and head home and uh we will see you guys next time bye, bye.